Okay, another major improvement which I like on the Ocean rather than on the TYT is uh, the display when you first get it you'll see both bands A and B band or two separate channels so with the uh, TYT uh, bear in mind this these two radios are cheap Chinese made radios and they're still a single clock uh, meaning that it's called a voltage control oscillator VCO but in layman's terms it's pretty much the heartbeat these two radios has only one heartbeat so they can only do one function at a time with that one heartbeat this radio here your Yesu VX7R it's got a dual VCO circuit in there so it's actually got two hearts in it not two brains that'll be two separate CPUs but two heartbeats so this could simultaneously scan two different frequency at the same time. You could scan one frequency and transmit on the other at the same time. You cannot do that with these two. Uh, when, you, when you're scanning, it could scan both of them, but it's going to toggle between the top and the bottom, top and the bottom at a certain given time. So that is one big difference and one big price difference between your your high-end radio and and your uh, introductory radios here but uh, other than that uh, the display like I said it's not gonna go away you can't simplify things and and have just one display you could toggle between two frequencies but uh, you cannot display only one on the ocean though you could so just one press of the button there and you could only concentrate on one frequency here and that that's an added plus if you could more options let's say so that's pretty good uh, another thing that I've discovered when I went to uh, New York City I programmed the TYT for all the police and fire frequencies of the city on all five boroughs so I could listen to what you know what's going on or whatever and I ran into a problem where I couldn't block out the transmit frequency so if you input a receive frequency on this to listen to let's say New York City Police Department you cannot block out the transmit you have to put something in there I couldn't put a the police transmit frequency in there because uh, that you know they're, they're pretty sketchy about their stuff anyway so if they pat me down and find this and they could see that this radio can transmit on police bands uh, I'm gonna be taken in and questioned especially after 9-11 so the only thing that I was able to do that'll work is the receive frequency is the police departments and the fire departments but I hard hard coded the uh, transmit frequency into a uh, amateur radio transmit frequency so if I do accidentally transmit or whatever it's just going to transmit into an amateur radio and and no big deal uh, I'm not going to be interfering with with public safety operations or whatever so that got me out of that jam and, and I didn't want to get caught with police transmit frequencies on my radio in New York City anyway because they got some pretty weird laws as far as scanning uh, that's another video all to itself but uh, on the ocean you could block it out you could only you could program this to where you could just have a ref uh, receive frequency leave the transmit frequency out and that'll take care of that particular problem well let's let's get complete with the testing here's the uh, TYT antenna and this particular one I dropped the first couple of weeks and it cracked right there where the rubber meets the plastic so that wasn't too cool but I kept it anyway and this little contraption here is just a ground plane because I wasn't getting a really good uh, reading uh, with this adapter I have made up the ground plane was a little bit too low so I brought it all the way up here so I should be getting a better reading so it's tuned to 140 and that's it right there and this spot right here is 450 475 465 around there so 
this is tuned to the hand bands and this is tuned to the uh, public safety frequencies which is a little bit too high uh, we might get the top end of the uh, the hand bands so this is TYT radio antenna number two and it hasn't been dropped or nothing so it's still somewhat alright and on the VHF it's gotten lower in frequencies it's like 137 or whatever but it's still resonating or in the bandwidth of upper lower uh, amateur band so we have it at 143 around there and that's where it starts to uh, kind of get out of spec so it's not entirely the whole hand band and this spot right here is 467 in the uh, public safety range but not the but not the uh, amateur range so, so it's kind of out there I mean one this is the uh, ocean antenna the standard quarter wave antenna and it's tuned to the public safety frequencies here this one here is 154 somewhere in the middle of the VHF uh, public safety band and this is in the upper four uh, 60s so this is within spec within the public safety frequency range not amateur range that's why it's important to kind of get the right antenna for the right HT or the right uh, service that you're operating in so here's a so-called high gain antenna it's a little bit longer than the other ones and here's the frequency response to that this is around 472 or actually lower than that around 450 so it's in the middle of the public safety range and that's pretty good this here is way out of spec it's 128 that's the airband uh, frequency range you know if you want to talk to uh, airline uh, airliners and stuff nowhere in in the uh, you know our operating range that we would deal in so I'm gonna do one more test on this to see what what the hell's going on well out of all the uh, antennas here on the scope they showed out of tunes for certain bands and in tune for some others uh, the only one that really performed somewhat well was this long high gain antenna from ocean uh, distributors it's from ocean and it's the only one that performed halfway decent uh, all the other ones here even this civilian Maldor yeah Mal Maldol antenna didn't perform as well as the others and this one here I'm transmitting and I don't get much reflected on 460 here so even this is yeah it's, it's tuning in a little bit but this is the only one that performs somewhat decent the rest of them uh, not so good okay one function that the uh, ocean has in this model and not the previous model or any of the other Chinese made stuff is this button right here if this thing focuses it's got uh, it's RPT for repeater I think or something like that in when the uh, setting is where you could input the frequency not in memory mode but in uh, direct frequency input mode you could actually do the offsets you see it go from a plus to a minus uh, then in reverse plus and a minus in reverse and that shifts the frequency to your repeater frequency so right now it's nothing there's no indication for a, a repeater shift that means you could talk from radio to radio bypassing the repeaters out there in the field and in the public safety uh, industry or service uh, that's important sometimes they, they don't want to transmit to the world you know using a repeater they just want to transmit to their other uh, partner two three blocks away going directly to him instead of going through a repeater uh, it just shortened the range and 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 it's a lot more better for discrete communication I guess if you don't want to transmit all over the place the one thing I don't like about this radio that that kind of bums bums me out if I go to the memory mode so there it is in memory mode that particular function does not work in the memory mode and that is messed up I mean 
in all the Motorola's and Kenwood's and, and so forth, they have that function that works to, to do that if you program it in, not the o ocean. And uh, let's see, if I bring it back to, uh, to uh, direct input mode, frequency input mode, then that particular function will work. Don't know if the uh, UV6 Delta version is capable of doing that or not, but I know in this new uh, 6X version, it's, it's not capable of doing that in the memory mode. So that is not good uh, for me, but I still like it. It's no big deal. I just work around it. I just put in an extra channel uh, that does the direct function instead of going through that one button. So no big deal. There's a workaround. Uh, and by the way, this thing holds 190 something frequencies where this holds like 99 or something. So it's double the memory. So that's another difference uh, between the models. Now for adaptability as far as power. In the other video I showed you that this is pretty flexible as far as power. Uh, here's a charging base and it hooks up to AC or you can hook up to uh, 12 volts DC from the back with a with an adapter and but the only thing that the TYT does not have is a clamshell for AA batteries or regular batteries you somewhat are dependent of their proprietary battery pack this battery pack has a 1500 uh, amp hours of power the ocean has uh, 1700 so it has a bigger capacity it lasts a little bit longer and transmit and receive out in the field so uh, and I brought two of them because their base comes standard with a, uh, a dual charging port you got the small one here and then you have the big one here you where you can fit the whole radio or just have the single battery go over to that side there without putting the whole radio in there so that, that's pretty cool you'll have a backup already, already charged and then your regular charging port for the other one uh, and what th the ocean has that this guy doesn't or and I looked recently to see if they have anything being offered and, and no there's no double-a battery carrier is that this guy here has a double-a battery charger here or carrier and it gives this radio full power as far as uh, you could transmit a whole 5 watts with all these batteries. This is pretty much the equivalent of what this puts out. And that's a plus because, you know, if, if your power goes out or whatever, sometimes you can't recharge using commercial power or whatever, or this could be damaged. But then you have a backup of a AA carrier, which all the public safety agencies out there all the radios that they use they do have the clamshells that that will accept commercial batteries because of Katrina during Katrina the, the, once the commercial power went out uh, they had no way of recharging their batteries so they all went under okay another big difference between the two when this guy runs out of batteries sometimes it just shuts off without any warning you have battery strength indicator here but uh, it's not the greatest, uh, so I always would have to have a freshly charged battery on this. Um, this guy, uh, on the other hand, uh, it will give you warnings. Uh, you have a battery indicator on the, on the faceplate there to let you know how much battery charge you got left. And it also give you a uh, warning. So one, one thing that, that was kind of weird for me to see is like right now, I have this on high power and I'm going to transmit in this frequency here. Watch the display. I have AA batteries in there that are three quarters of the way used. I got one bar as far as uh, battery strength on this. Now look at the display while I transmit because that's the point where it uses the most current. It goes away even though it's transmitting. So let's see if I'm uh, if I'm uh, transmitting. So I am transmitting, even though the display has uh, blanked out when I do transmit. So the only thing that goes away is the display on the Ushan uh, uh, radio, but you still have transmit and it transmits uh, when, when, when I do press the button. 
Uh, the only thing that I haven't measured is if if the power level goes down while I'm transmitting. Uh, I would imagine so, but I don't know by how much and I already put all my equipment away so I can't measure it at this moment. So that's another somewhat of a downside, but it, it kind of lets you know that, that it, you, you have to change your battery sometime real soon. The, uh, the batteries that this thing comes with, the uh, lithium ion battery packs, they, they last for a pretty long time. But it's kind of nice that this thing doesn't die uh, uh, completely without warning. It, it will give you a warning. When you turn on the uh, the radio, it shows you how much battery you got left. And then you would know if you need to recharge it or not. And I also have a uh, vehicle adapter that plugs in to this port right here. So I'm not dependent on AC. I could use a regular car battery to power this up. Uh, they also sell a battery eliminator. It's pretty much a clamshell with one of these cords uh, to it to power up the radio itself. But uh, I didn't purchase one of those. Uh, I might later on, just for more adaptability on my part, I just ran out of money. So there you have it, a long, exhaustive uh, review of the uh, Wuxan with lots of data collected and, and the differences between this guy and the old TYT. Uh, radio and one of the uh, amateur radios that I have as a comparison like I said uh, I'm not recommending either which one or the other uh, this is pretty much what I'm running this is going to be used for projects you know repeaters or something or pass out to the family which I've done on road trips and whatnot and this is going to be my uh, everyday beater up uh, usage radio because of uh, the water uh, issues as far as uh, it repels water, it's water resistant. Uh, it's a much simpler radio. This has a this has a lot of features with uh, fire service and and uh, tones and stuff like that being toned out, and it doesn't work too well. It's not reliable, so it's kind of a of a mute point to have those uh, at least for that. But this doesn't have all those extra features. It's just a pla uh, Jane plain basic radio. Uh, with not much uh, bells and whistles to it, which I kind of prefer because uh, I don't use half the features on this except not even scrambling because scrambling is illegal, but uh, I don't think I need it on this one here. And this is what I'm going to take out to the field more often. There you have it, the Ushan UV6X. And for you uh, civilians and amateurs, UV6 Delta. Uh, for the same model, but with on the ham channels and stuff like that. I think this will be too much for you guys. I mean, half the frequencies you can't even use because uh, it'll be illegal. So, okay, there you go. Gorilla Geek going 10-10.